TC3. My name is Chris, and here's what's happening in this week's TC3 News. One of the best ways to stay connected to what's happening in the life of the church is by following us on social media. Just search TC3 Church on Facebook and Instagram to stay up to date with everything that's going on here at the church. You can also find us on YouTube. Our channel is youtube.com slash TC3 Church. Here you will find access to all of our services on demand, as well as music videos, children's messages, and youth information. You will also have access to all of our other ministry channels, so make sure you subscribe to all those channels today. Oh, and here's a little pro tip. Make sure you click that bell so you'll be updated when something new is posted and you will never ever miss new content. As we move forward into a new year, we wanna say thank you so much for all of your generosity and your giving in 2020. Please know that all giving statements will be emailed to you by January 23rd. If you have never submitted your email to us or would like to update your email in our records, please send your information to info at tc3.church. Here at TC3, we believe the best way to connect with others and to grow in your faith is by joining a life group. Being in a life group provides an opportunity to make close friends and enjoy lasting relationships forever. You will also be challenged to take your next step in your spiritual journey and others will help cheer you on. Next month, we are launching a variety of groups. Check out our menu of groups at tc3.church slash life groups. We want to invite you to an experience here at TC3 that we call Rooted. This is a 10 week journey where you can begin to see God in new ways and find yourself in his story. No matter where you stand in your relationship with Jesus, there is always room to move forward. So come and deepen your faith and learn to live out your calling as a radical follower of Jesus Christ. Rooted begins on February 9th, and we hope you will join us and come with an open heart and an open mind and see how God will surprise you. Make sure you register and you can learn more at tc3.church slash rooted. The big red buses are coming back to TC3 on Sunday, January 24th. If you'd like to donate blood, make your appointments now at tc3.church slash oneblood. Appointment times are between 9.30 a.m. and 3 p.m. And here's a bonus. All donors will receive a $10 e-card, t-shirt, a free appetizer coupon for Carabas, a wellness checkup, and a free antibody test. Register today at tc3.church slash oneblood. Bring the family and join us for a fun and a casual bike ride on Saturday, January 30th at 11 a.m. at Riverbend Park in Jupiter. You will need your bike, helmet, water, and a snack. You can let us know if you plan to be there by registering ahead of time at tc3.church slash events. Here at TC3, we're all about connecting people to the life-changing power of Jesus Christ. And we hope that in today's experience, you connect with Jesus in a real way. TC3, how are we doing this morning? We are so happy that you're joining us. Let us stand and worship.
Jesus name Life's made whole Hearts awake At the sound of Jesus name Come on, say Chains will fall Prison shake At the sound of Jesus
I'm better than you, Lord, there's nothing Nothing is better than you Come on, sing that one more time with me, come on Oh, there's nothing Come on Nothing is better than you Amen, you believe that church? Amen, you guys can be seated Man, good morning church If you believe that there's nothing better than our God Would you give him a round of applause in this place? Man, we're so thankful for the God that we serve And that there truly is nothing better than our God. Man, welcome to TC3 this morning. We're so thankful that you're here. My name is Miles, and I get to serve our students here at TC3. If it's your very first time, we want to we wanna welcome you. If you're watching online, we're so thankful that you guys are with us as well. Now, if it is your, your very first time, we're going to ask you to do something super simple. Uh, go ahead and take out your smartphone, and we're going to ask that you head to the website tc3.church slash new. This website will give you the opportunity to fill out a form. It'll take you just a couple of minutes um, to tell us about who you are, how you heard about our church, and then how we can be praying for you as you go throughout the rest of the rest of your week. We want to learn you by name, and we want to be praying for you as, as well. Uh, also, during this service, actually right now, there's a starting point class happening. And so if you are new to our church family or if you are new to the faith and you want to get a deeper dive into who we are as a church body or into your relationship with Jesus, we want to ask that you go ahead and head over to the, to the starting point class that is happening right now in our other building. Now, we usually use this time for, for offering and giving. We believe here at TC3 that, that giving is just another act of obedience. We get to give out of the things that God has blessed us with, mainly our time, our talents, and our treasures. And so we give that back to God saying, Jesus, we know, we know this is just you blessing us. And so God, we're gonna, we're gonna remember that this is yours by giving it back to you. But before we do that, I wanna tell you something that's happening just on our online campus, actually. We're so thankful for you and, and for your gracious giving because at the end of the day, our online campus doesn't happen without you. And so with that, we're able to, we're able to stream all over um, the world and via Facebook or Vimeo and other video um, addresses because of, because of your giving. And so you can leave here this morning and you can go home and you can share the message on Facebook today. But what we're seeing is community being built around our online stream. And as a result, people ask for prayer and, and oftentimes we have to and get to respond to those prayer requests that are asked online. But what we're seeing lately is that you guys and prayer warriors that belong to this church body are responding before we even get a chance to. And they're loving on the people online that may not know Jesus at all. And so people are connecting to the life-changing power of Jesus Christ because of your giving and because of what you're doing in obedience to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we want to say thank you so much for your giving, and we would ask that you would feel challenged and led to continue to be obedient in that way. So if you want to give today, you can easily text the number 77977 with the words TC3 and whatever amount you feel led to give, or as you exit today at the information desk, there are two giving buckets on either side. Would you pray with me? Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, God, that we get to worship you. We thank you, Jesus, that in spite of all that's going on, God, you are still on the throne and you are still worthy of all of our praise. And so, Jesus, we surrender our hearts and our lives to you. And we pray, Jesus, that we may live for Christ, to live as Christ, Jesus, and to die is gain. And so God, we're so thankful for who you are and that we get to be a part of what you're doing. Soften our hearts now as Gordon comes with the message and as we continue to worship in Jesus name. Amen. I'd love to invite you guys to stand, stand back with us and worship. We're going to sing a song here that we kind of ended the year strong singing and, and uh, it's just been, we've had great moments of worship in the room with it. And it, I, I love the song because it's a little country and while at church, that's who I am. And so uh, it's called Evidence. And the song 
it, it, it's so neat because I think now, right, we, uh, uh, we can kind of uh, relate our relationship to God or experience connecting with God like in the here and in the now. Well, God, where are you? I don't feel you. I'm going through something. Or, amen, let me, let me post and shout the good news because I'm on a mountaintop. And I think like what God calls us to do more than that is to have an eternal perspective on the narrative of our life over the long haul that he's in control and he's faithful and when he brings us through times of turmoil and his grace provides and abides and he brings us into times of hope and times of celebration because his grace is abundant and sufficient that we can look back on that and think he's been moving all along we're in a time right now where things feel tough every every corner you know uh, it could be it could be financial it could be uh, where we're at with our country how we relate uh, to our brothers and sisters the turmoil and the frustration but it's important for us to know God is in control and he's always working the first line of this song is all throughout my history your faithfulness right the faithfulness of God is just right there beside me walking beside me and I bet if we take a second and we look back over the narrative of our lives we can come to an understanding that like God is good and he's faithful and he loves his people y'all with me church let's just think about that let's think about hope hope to be strong hope to be better because he's not done with you and he's key he's going to keep on working through you and if you believe that come on let's sing it together Story, your faithfulness is walking beside me. The wind and storms make a way for spring. That's right. In every season, from where I'm standing, I see the evidence of your good. All over my life, all over my life. Come on now. I see your promises in fulfillment. All over my life, all over my life. Let's think about it. Lead in. Come on. Help me remember when I'm weak.
could I feel Cause the evidence is here Listen, we're going to sing that again, but I just want you to know, man, wherever you're at, whatever you're going through, God's pulling you through something into something. His faithfulness is real. His love and grace. We have hope to be strong. And all you got to do is just think about it. Come on. So why should I feel all oh, the evidence is here? Think about it one more time, church. Come on. So why? Sing it true. Mm, that's good in the church. Come on now.
That just puts it all back into perspective. It, it helps get our mind realigned. It helps us realize who really uh, is in charge of it all. And uh, it makes whatever we're going through seem a little bit smaller uh, because of who we have with us. Now, we've been in a series called 21 Days, and we've been processing through really where our life has been and where God wants to take it to. And one of the things that Mark Twain said uh, a while back was he said that 20 years from now, the things that we will regret are not so much the things that we have done, but the things that we have left unaccomplished. And so we talked about that thought of really maximizing the time that God has given us. That's what this whole series is about. And we kind of landed last week with if we wanted to change our life, then we ought to change the way that we're living our life. And if we don't like the character that's revealed in our story, that we ought to change the, the character of the character in the story. We ought to start today. Because James, he says it really clearly. He says, remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do, the good that you ought to do, and not to do it. That's in James chapter 4, verse number uh, 17. And then we went on this 21-day challenge. I hope, I hope you haven't fallen off the wagon in the 21-day challenge. If you have, like with those devos, like literally two minutes will catch you up on one of those days. So I'm confident that if you even start now, you can get caught up. And what I like about the 21-day challenge from a devo standpoint is it puts us all in this daily rhythm of connecting with God um, and listening to what the text has to say about our lives. I like the, the de devos that we have because they're character specific. They deal with issues that different characters in the Bible we're dealing with. And so if you haven't jumped on board with the 21-day challenge, go to tc3.church slash 21 days and you can get connected with that. I'm really, really encouraged by how many people signed up to take a, a day of, of fasting. That is the thing of all of this that I believe will make a difference in regards to where God wants to take this church. And so for you to give a day of prayer and fasting for the life of this church to move it forward is something that uh, I greatly appreciate and uh, it, it's powerful. Then we also ask that people for the next 21 days connected with uh, God through, this, through the discipline of, of intentional uh, percentage giving, finding a place to serve, and then also uh, 21 days of positive posting on social media. How many of you found that to be a challenge? Like you, you started out and you're like, I don't really have anything good to say, but try to find something. I got a great cat. I got a great cat. It's positive. God put it in my life, so I'm just going to put a picture of that in there. Anyway, Try to continue to do that, like lean in for the next 21 days of just positive posting on social media. For, all, for us that know the good we ought to do, and those of us that don't do that, for us that is sin. So here's, here's good news and here's bad news. Nobody can go back, none of us can go back and make a, a fresh start. We can't, we can't go back and change history. We can't change what we've done. We can't change the things that have been done to us. We can't go back and get a brand new start, but everybody can start where they are to make a brand new future. We can all start where we are to make a brand new future, no matter how far underground you feel, as long as there's breath in your lungs and as long as God is on the throne, right, there, there is uh, definitely the opportunity to see life change in your world, and especially even this side of eternity. So as we go into 21 days week two, it's really about uh, a good life starts with a God foundation. Like many of us, we have, have wrestled, we've, we've vacillated, we believe in God, but we haven't fully connected to God by submitting to God's work and God's will for our life. It's like we love God, we love the things of God, but that playing out in our practical life has been a challenge. And if that's been a challenge for us, then God really hasn't become the foundation of our life. A good life begins with a God foundation. And Jesus said these words in Luke chapter 6. He said this. He said, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Like, why, why do you say that you're committed to me, but yet not do the things um, that I ask you to do? And what he's saying in a nutshell is that, that the evidence of a true believer is obedience. 
just like the evidence of love and true commitment, is faithfulness in a marriage. Like, if you love someone, you've made a commitment to be married to them, then faithfulness will be a part of how you play out uh, that, that love relationship. And James is saying, listen, along with what Jesus is saying, he's saying, remember, it is sin to know what you ought to do and then not to do it. Well, what is sin? Like, is a good question. What is sin? Sin is missing the mark. It really goes back to an old archery term. You, you pull the, the bow back and you have the arrow and the arrow is focused in on, the, you focus the arrow in on the target. You miss the target, you miss the mark, that would be called sinning. That is actually where the term comes from. Sin is missing the mark. And when it comes to this issue of sin, there are, there are really two ways to think about it. One is there's the sin of commission. There are those things that we do wrong that are contrary to the will of God. It's a willful violation of God's command. Like, we knew we shouldn't do it, but we did it. We knew that it was clear in Scripture that we shouldn't do it, but we did it anyway. So the sin of commission is willful, a willful violation of God's uh, commandments. And then there's another way we sin. And this is the way that those of us that have been in relationship with God for a very long time, this is most often the way that, that we sin. It's called the sin of omission. And it is, in its simplest terms, a willful disregard for God's commands. Like we know the things that we ought to do, but we don't do them. There's a part of us that is reserved for us. Like we're 95% committed, but we're not all the way in. We don't speak like that, but if we look at our lives, we know that that is true. And Paul wrestles with this in Romans chapter 7. I love Romans 7 and Romans 8. If you ever get a minute, just read Romans 7 fully through and then read Romans 8 because you don't get a picture of both unless you read both those chapters together. But the, the humanity of Paul is really revealed in Romans 7. And he kind of breaks it down and he says that he does things that he doesn't want to do. All of us do that. We all sin. We find ourselves doing things that we don't want to do. So that's the sin of commission. And then he then talks about the things that he knows he should do, he doesn't find himself doing. That's the sin of omission. And then he goes, who will rescue me from this body of sin and death? Thanks be to the Lord Jesus Christ who rescues me from the body, this body of sin and death. Rolls into Romans chapter 8. There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And so we have this wrestling match and then we have the way that we overcome the wrestling match. But what Paul is saying is, and what James is saying, and what Jesus is saying is that it's sinful to do things that are evil. It's just as sinful to avoid doing things that are good that we're called to. I've seen people have clear calls on their life to do certain things, but they walk away from those things because of the pull of something else. A person, money, a cause, or they just don't want to put the time and effort into it. And they walk away like the rich young ruler, sad. The sin of omission was when we could have, we should have, but we didn't. Those are the things that, that sting us. That uh, kind of goes back to the Mark Twain quote. Those are the things that you know, we regret when we look back on life. And the sin of omission, it just has consequences. And so as we round into 2021, we want to make sure that we limit those regrets. I think about uh, TC3, and I think about how it's just kind of an unorthodox work, how it was started by a couple of people who are still with us today where they just got together, wanted to do church differently, and they, they launched out. A pastor mortgaged his house. They met in living rooms. They met in movie theaters. They met in strip plazas, rented space. They were at the old Knights of Columbus, right? I mean, this wild adventure that God would take them on, and I'm so thankful that this church has taken risks along the way. 
But if you don't take risks along the way, you miss out on the, the God adventures, the opportunities that come from stepping out in faith. Because the sin of omission, it has consequences. I keep thinking about what if those, that group of people never ventured out? What if they just decided to play it safe and do what everybody else was doing? We wouldn't have what we have today here at TC3. Because they would have limited the flow of God's blessing and they would have left their spiritual potential. This is the most important part. They would have left their spiritual potential on the table. And I think that's what happens when we get into the sin of omission. We leave our spiritual potential on the table. All of us know people and we look at them and we think about the potential that's inside of them and we see how they're living their lives and it saddens us. So we go back to the question of how obedient to God am I? If Jesus is Lord of our life, then it's evident in how we live our life, in the obedience factor. Jesus says, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? So then he goes on to kind of describe what a life founded on, on him actually is going to look like. And it really answers the question of why we should build our foundation on God. And I love that he kind of plays this out in the context of his greater and larger sermon and really answers a big question for some of us that are wrestling, why should I listen to and do what God says? You know, why should I listen to and do what God says? Jesus answers that question. He said, for everyone who comes to me and hears my words and puts them into practice, I will show you what they are like. So he's talking to a crowd of people, and he's telling them, if you hear my words and you put them into practice, this is what you're going to look like. So hearing the words of the Lord and putting those things into practice, those two things are really the marks of a disciple. The definition of a disciple, like we talk about discipleship and what that looks like and all that. Discipleship is simple. A disciple is someone who hears the word of God, and puts it into practice in their daily life. That's why we talk about on a regular basis how we can put the Word of God to work in our lives on a daily basis. So the person who listens to and does what God says, Jesus goes further and he says, listen, they're like a man building a house. He digs down deep and lays a foundation on the rock. So those of you that have built houses and those of you that are in the building industry, we've all seen houses come up. We understand the value of a good and solid foundation. So someone who builds uh, their life on Christ is like a man who's building a house, who dug down deep, laid the foundation on the rock, and then here's the result. When a flood came, the torrent struck the house, but could not shake it because it was well built. I wonder if that could be said of us, that we are well built. Because the floods, they're gonna come. Like in 2020, unexpected floods came. In 2021, that's not going to stop. There'll be a health crisis. There'll be some economic challenges. There'll be some relational things that'll be very difficult and hard for us to push through. There'll be some emotional things that just capture us for a season. And there'll be storms that come in the form of just a spiritual form. Like there is a very real spirit world. Like when you can't explain something, there is a very real spirit world. And you see it from time to time. And it's blatant from time to time, but most of the time you don't see it. I was thinking about the spirit world and like I've had people just along the way, like I've been on a walk with my wife and I've had someone drive by and ride by on a bike and look at me and go, I'm going to kill you. I've, I've, I've gotten off a bus in San Francisco, and I remember a lady specifically saying, because I was on a mission trip, she said, stay away from me. I know why you're here. Like, I don't know that lady from anybody. I've been standing along the shore of a little pond, and a guy looked at me, and he goes, you're a pastor, aren't you? And I'm like, yeah. You know, I, I'm looking grubby as can be. I'm not all cleaned up. But yet, there is this spirit world, and if you don't think that there is a spirit world, you need to really reevaluate as you look at the world around you. And what Jesus is saying is the right foundation stands strong 
in the middle of a storm. It stands strong in the middle of the storm because storms will come. So why should I listen to and do what God says? A good foundation holds up when the storms of life come. So let's make sure our foundation is on the Lord. Let's make sure that our lives are a witness when the storms come, that we are well built. This is one of the biggest things that really tells us if our foundation is the Lord or not when the storms come. Are we fearful? When the storms come, are we angry? When the storms come, do we reflect bitterness? When the storms come, are we anxious? Or are instead, because we are founded on the Lord, is there a gentleness that's in our spirit? Are we faithful to the Lord knowing that he fights our battles, as the song said, for us? Are we thankful in the storm? Is there a sense of peace that transcends understanding when the storm comes our direction? A good storm is the biggest witness that a world will see to know if our faith is really real or not. So Jesus says, if your foundation is built on me, when the storms of life come, you're going to stand strong. But then he takes it further and he tells us what we can expect if we refuse to listen to and do what God says or do it halfway. This is what we can expect. expect. He said, but the one who hears my words and does not put them into practice is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. The moment the torrent struck, that house, it collapsed, collapsed, and its destruction was complete. A godless foundation crumbles when the storms of life hit. And that's why Jesus is saying, build your house on the rock. Because you'll be able to stand when the storms of life come. Because floods, they're going to come. Bad news will come. Unexpected events will happen. And the wrong foundation will crumble if we build our life on the wrong foundation. Let's not build our foundation on a person. Let's not build our foundation on a bank account. Let's not build our foundation on who we are as a person because we are and deemed ourselves to be self-made. Let's let our foundation be on the Lord because floods are coming and the wrong foundation crumbles. So then it takes us down this road of questioning. Well then, Gordon, how do I, how do I build my life on God? How do I do that? And the simple answer is, is be zealous for God. Like, be all in. I love when Jesus calls his disciples that he calls this group of disciples from various backgrounds. If we stopped and we talked about uh, what you do in life, where you come from, the variety in this congregation right now here in front of me would be, would be fun to listen to, the backgrounds that are here and the things that you have all done and experienced and seen. And Jesus, he calls this group of disciples that are from varied backgrounds. It's one of the beautiful things of the church. And he chooses this radical named Simon the Zealot. Simon the Zealot, different from Simon Peter. Simon Zealot is chosen by Jesus. He's mentioned four different times. We don't really get a a picture of much of his activity in the text of Scripture, but what we do know is something about the zealots. The zealots were called zealots because they were zealous for one cause, one political reason. They were a political-minded group of people. They were Jewish people that wanted to overthrow the Roman government. Their resolve was strong, and Jesus chooses this zealot. And the zealots are known for carrying these knives with these crooked blades, right, that would cause a lot of damage if they were, they were put in the flesh of a Roman soldier or into the flesh of a Jewish person who was sympathetic to the Roman cause. They would hide these knives under their clothes and, and they would take out unsuspecting targets. They were zealous to overthrow the Roman government. And Jesus calls Simon the Zealot to help him establish this new kingdom. And Simon, I'm sure, is thinking, 
I'm going to get rid of the Romans. I'm going to lock arms with Jesus because change is coming. And here's what Jesus was thinking. Simon is passionate. He's really passionate about overthrowing the government. He's passionate about it. And Jesus is thinking, all that passion channeled for the right and higher purpose could make a serious difference. All that passion channeled the right direction could make a serious difference. And tradition tells us that Simon the Zealot passionately preached the gospel after Jesus ascended to heaven in Persia. And he was killed because he refused to sacrifice to the sun god. And as I look at the life of TC3, I keep thinking, we all have this passion. With all this passion, if we were channeling it for the right purpose, we could make a serious difference. I think about the immediate vision of the church. This has been an interesting time to lead through from your standpoint, from my standpoint as well. It's been an interesting time in the life of this church to lead through COVID. And now as we move forward, you know, what's on our radar is connection. People have lost connection. And we want people to get reconnected to the habit of being a part of the church. In this time period, it's been easy to get disconnected. And so one of the things that we're going to do just as we kind of move into 2021 is is we're going to start an outdoor venue. Um, So out here on the lawn, there's already some concrete that's been poured out there. We're just going to put up a screen and we're going to live stream the service that's happening on the inside, on the outside in the courtyard so that people can bring their lawn chairs and come and be a part of what is happening here on Sundays. And so it will be a, a safe and next step for them to be able to be a part of what's happening on the inside. And so we're excited about that happening, and we're going to lean into relationships. One of the things I'm thinking about is, man, there has been a revealed in this time period, this need for connection, because we've been so separated. And there is just this need to really lean into relationships. So we as a church, we're going to be leaning into relationships. One of the things that I've been noticing a lot in the life of this church is that we have a lot of single people that call this place home. And I'm really praying about how in the world God would have us to reach into the lives of people that are particularly in that single status and help them develop Christian community. Another thing we're going to do is we're going to lean into outreach. So every other month or so, we're going to do a large outreach that we can all be a part of uh, and make a difference in our community like we have done all along the way. Another thing we're going to do is that we're going to lean into a Uh, developing a social media strategy. I believe that we've got some incredible content. If you're a parent and you haven't gone on to our YouTube channel and checked out what Pastor Andy puts out on a weekly basis, it's incredible content for your kids. We've got incredible praise and worship content. We've got valuable teaching content. It's all online. And I believe that we online are like the church that we were when we were at Palmetto Drive. We were the greatest church you'd never find because the location was a challenge. And now online, I think we've got some of the greatest content you'll never find. So we're going to develop a strategy to try to figure that out. But then also, from a standpoint of where we're heading, in the next 10 years, you need to know something. There's, there's 980 church, 80 houses coming in within three miles of this church. 980 new families are coming into this area within three miles of here. And that goes along with the strategy that we've had all along, really our 10-year strategy is that we want to see this church tripled in size. Not because we want to pat ourselves on the back and go, we've tripled in size, but because we want to empty hell and populate heaven. That's why we want to do that. We want to see five churches, at least in the next 10 years, revitalized, whether we come alongside them or whether they become a part of TC3. We want to help out the local works that are here in neighborhoods. I want to see us in the next 10 years eliminate the debt that, it, that we're under when we built this building. I'm so thankful for this campus because it provides us what we're able to do today in a pretty safe environment. And one of the bigger, two of the bigger things... I want us to see us get in a position where we're a million dollar giving church, where every year we give a million dollars to missions and outreach. 
That's big on my heart. Right now, 15% of what comes in goes to missions and outreach. I would love to see that number get up to a million bucks, and I'd love to see the kingdom get, get pushed further, farther, faster, because people who are out there trying to do it have the resources that they need to do it. And one of the other things is, is if you've been with me for a while, you know that I've got a hunger inside of my heart to see a bridge center get birthed. And the bridge center is where uh, nonprofits kind of come together and they centralize on one location, and we as the people of God can be servants in those different avenues where people are getting help, and we can give people a hand up versus a hand out, and we can be the hands and feet and voice of Jesus Christ. And so that is on our 10-year vision as well. But too often, too often, our best passion is given to lesser purposes. That's one of my greatest concerns is that we would live lives and give our passions to lesser purposes. Some of us, we've leaned into business and we've been all about building a bigger bottom line, all about building profit. We get consumed with getting our own personal finances in order. And in the Old Testament, it's like Haggai the prophet, when Israel was in this time of prosperity, God sent him to them and he spoke these words to them. He said, listen, he said, give careful thoughts to your ways. Give careful thought to your ways. You've planted much, but you've harvested little. You eat, but are never satisfied. You drink, but you never have your fill. You put on clothes, but you're not warm. You earn wages only to put them in a purse with holes in it. Can't we relate to that? We're more successful than we've ever been, but more empty than we've ever been. And the reward isn't what we thought it would be. And the reason that God sent the prophet was because that they were busy building their own lives and the house of the Lord was left in neglect. The priority of their passions became an issue. And it mirrors what Jesus would say in the New Testament where he said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of these, of God and his righteousness and all of these things will be added unto you. And too often, our best passion is given to a lesser purpose, and building the bottom line isn't our greatest purpose. Too often, our best passion is given to politics. Listen, we don't serve a donkey or an elephant. We serve the Lamb of God. Our highest and greatest purpose is to be zealous about Jesus, to be zealous about Jesus and politics make a pathetic religion. Let's be passionate about Jesus. And our best passion, as we turn 2021, it, our best passion isn't fitness. Like all of us are about reducing the belt line, right? Our best passion isn't fitness. We spend $28 million or billion dollars annually on gym memberships, trying to look good. I got some news for you. You're still going to die. Just figured I'd throw that out there. You're still going to die. Paul says exercise is of some value. Should you stop exercising? No. Should you maximize the time that you have by being healthy? Most certainly yes, so that you can do the will of God effectively. And it, we are responsible to take care of our own bodies. But if we are a fitness fanatic, if exercise is what we live for, if our passion is going, that means our passion is going to a lesser purpose. If look at me as our biggest goal, then there's a problem. So let's, let's not let our greatest passion go to business or politics or fitness. Let's make sure that our best level of passion goes for his greater purpose. Let's all of us be zealous for God. So then I'm going to wrap up on this. How do I build my life on God? Be zealous about the things of God. Be devoted to God. The Acts 2 story is one that we should all be aware of. It's about a bunch of people who came from different backgrounds, different racial backgrounds, different economic backgrounds, different histories, but the cause of Christ, it brought them together. And they devoted themselves, it says in the text of Scripture, to teaching and fellowship and the breaking of bread and prayer. And the result was that everyone was filled with awe. Signs and wonders were performed and all the believers were together and had everything it says in common. Everything in common. Now, here's an interesting fact. I talked about Simon the Zealot. 
Jesus brings in Simon the Zealot, who was all about politics. He also brings in, as a disciple, Matthew the tax collector. Matthew the tax collector would be someone who got his paycheck from Rome. So Simon the Zealot, in a real world, would have hated Matthew the tax collector. But somehow the gospel of Christ brought them together. And they would serve together and they would put their passions towards a greater purpose. That's what God has called us to do. Let's be zealous for God. Let's be devoted for God. We can't go back and make a brand new start, but we can move forward and make a brand new ending. And make no mistake about it, every good life starts with a God foundation. Let's pray. Father, right now in this moment, I pray, Father, that you would help us to take an inventory of our life, of the gifts that you've given us, of the the blessings along the way, and you, dear Lord, would help, help help us yield those to your greater purpose. May our passions not be captured or misdirected for lesser purposes, and may your hand be upon us. May you, dear Lord, help us to not waste this precious gift we call life, and may we yield our life to your greater purpose for our life. So, Father, right now, I pray that as we go into this next song, that we would think about our life and think about your call on our life, and we would lean in to you being the good God that you are as we move into this coming year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
so glad that you guys are here like always under the screens there will be people there to pray with you if you need that if you're online jump on the chat ask for prayer we got people waiting to pray with you as well we say it each week when we meet the mission field begins as soon as you guys hit those doors god bless we'll see you next week